Today, we would like to present on topic Sustainable Strategy for Managing Pests. Let's start. In this video, you will find First, RNA Interference Technology and its Application in Pest Management Second, Entomopathogenic Microorganisms, Fish, Application and Mode of Action Third, Integrated Pest Management and Types of Insect Traps Fourth, Planting Techniques Used to Control Pests Ribonucleic Acid Interference Technology and its Application in Pest Management RNAI is defined as sequence-specific silencing of target gene. When the cells want to stop making a protein, it produces a RNAI molecules which silences certain DNA from producing a protein. RNAI is a naturally occurring necessary genetic component for all organisms including humans. Do you know how ribonucleic acid interference silences the target gene in the insect pest? In plant-mediated or host-induced RNAI approach, a crop plant is engineered with hairpin RNAI vector to produce double-stranded RNA against the target gene of insect pests. Upon feeding on plant parts, double-stranded RNA enters into the insect gut, leading to the induction of RNAI machinery and then silencing of the target gene in the insect pest. This is the illustration on how silencing of the target gene in the insect pest happen. As we see in the right part of the illustration, the insect feed on plant producing double-stranded RNAs or small interfering RNA. While on the left part of the illustration, the potential target gene in target insect is identified and the hairpin RNAI was struck. Then, the RNAI plants producing double-stranded RNAs or small interfering RNA again the target gene. When the double-stranded RNA form, it's cleaved by diacer-like enzyme to form small interfering RNA. Next, small interfering RNAs enter the insect body by feeding. Selective degradation of target gene transcript. So the expected outcomes are pest resistant plant. Application of ribonucleic acid interference technology in pest management. Ribonucleic acid interference can be used as a form of genetic pesticide that can be built right into a plant's biology. First, crop produce ribonucleic acid interference that change plant chemistry, making that plant unattractive to a pest. Second, an insect pest feeds on a crop that deploys ribonucleic acid interference coded to stop the ability for the pest to digest food and process nutrients from the plants. As a result, the pest grow or ability to reproduce is low or the pest will die. Third, ribonucleic acid interference can block a plant's susceptibility to an herbicide allowing the herbicide to only kill weeds on the farm. Entomopathogenic Microorganism Application and Mode of Action Entomopathogenic microorganisms can be defined as microorganisms that are pathogenic to insects, such as atropod, mites, and things. Some examples for entomopathogenic microorganisms that can be used as a microbial agent in integrated pest management IPM are bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and virus. The first one is bacteria. Bacillus thuringiensis is a species of bacteria that live in soil. It makes protein that are toxic to some insects when eaten, but not others. The protein are not toxic to humans because, like all mammals, we cannot activate them. Bacillus thuringiensis is a gram-positive, motile, and rod-shaped bacterium. It produces a paraspiral crystal composed of one or more proteins. The strain of Bacillus thuringiensis characterizes affect members of three insect order, which are Lepidoptera, butterflies and moth, Diptera, mosquito and biting flies, as well as Coleoptera, beetles. Let's take a look on mode of action of Bacillus thuringiensis. Firstly, Bacillus thuringiensis strains produce crystalline protein called six endotoxins. Later, caterpillar will consume the Bacillus thuringiensis spore and crystalline toxin on the treated leaf. After that, the Bacillus thuringiensis crystalline toxin in diamond shape binds to the gut wall receptor, and the caterpillar will stop feeding. Within hours, the gut wall breaks down, allowing spores, oval tube shape, and normal gut bacteria, circular shape, to enter body cavity, where the toxin dissolves. Eventually, the caterpillar dies in 24 to 48 hours from septicemia, as spores and gut bacteria proliferate in its blood. The table below shows the EPA-registered bacteria to this product. The biopesticides work specifically on the target pest. The second one, we move on to entomopathogenic fungi. It can cause infection when spores come in contact with the insect host. Under ideal condition, which moderate temperature with high relative humidity, fungal spores germinate and bridge the insect critical through enzymatic degradation and mechanical pressure to gain entry into the insect body. Fungi multiply, invade the insect tissue, emerge from the dead insect, and produce more spores. Fungal pathogens have a broad host range, especially suitable for controlling pests that have piercing and sucking mouth part because spores do not have to be ingested. The tables below show the biopesticide derived using various of fungi species, and it consists of a wide range of target pests. For example, one or more pests of Acarina, Coleoptera, Diptera, Hemiptera, Hymenoptera, Lepidoptera, Orthoptera, Lysanoptera, and other plant parasitic nematodes. Next is virus. Entomopathogenic virus need to be ingested by the insect host just like bacteria. It ideal for controlling pests that have chewing mouth part. Virus particles invade the nucleus of the meat gut, fat body, or other tissue cells, compromising the integrity of the tissues and liquefying the cadavers. Virus are very host-specific, thus it can cause significant reduction of the host populations. 
There are two types of virus can be used as biopesticide. The first one is granulovirus GB, which is Cydia pomodella GB. The next one is Mucilo polyhedrovirus and PB, which are Helicover Pazia and PB and Swadoptera exigua and PB. Both of the virus target Lepidoptera as their host. The last one is nematodes. Entomopathogenic nematodes are microscopic, soil dwelling worms that are parasitic to insects. Infective juvenile of entomopathogenic nematodes actively seek out their host and enter through natural openings such as mouth, spiracles, and anus or the intersegmental membrane. Inside the host body, the nematodes release symbiotic bacteria that kill the host through bacterial septicemia. For example, heteroreptitis species carry photoreptor species bacteria and stainerma species carry xenoreptor species of bacteria. The table below shows that biopesticides using nematodes. There are some species of nematodes and their trade name of biopesticides. All of the biopesticides target several order of soil-borne pests. Okay, for the next part is integrated pest management. Before that, I want to ask you, do you know the behavior of pests or insects can be exploited in order to control its population? And how? Okay, to control the population of the insects, we will need a pheromone trap, light trap, pitfall trap, and medis trap. Each attract insect by chemical. In more detail, it like fact making. Males are attracted to a powder containing female attracted pheromones. The pheromones stick to the male bodies and when they fly off, the pheromones make them attractive to other males. So then, they will trap that when go to seeking the pheromones. How light traps works? Do you know? The insects see in color but in a different range of color from that of the human eyes. In other explanation, these insects are naturally attracted to bright color like white, yellow and orange. Then, how is a pitfall trap works? A pitfall trap is a device used to trap insects that are active on the crown surface. How melee traps works? The mechanism of these traps is easy. It's a mesh tent like trap that captures insects that tends to fly up. Do you know, a long time ago, the nicotine was used as insecticides in Australia. And how it works? The works behind the usage of nicotine as insecticide is they are these psychoactive alcoholic and agonists of the ionotropic nicotine acetylcholine receptor or known as NAUS. This is can trigger the activation lead to the increasing in signaling along the neuronal network. And NAUS can eventually lead to death. Press the insects and weeds can cause a great loss to farmer. So here are several common planting techniques used to control pests, which includes cover crop, mulching, transplanting, and intercropping. The first technique is planting cover crop. It is a type of plant grown mainly to prevent soil erosion, restrain weed, improve biodiversity, boost soil quality and fertility, and control disease and pests. Four common types of cover crops are legumes, grasses, non-legume broadleaf, and brassicas. There are usually annual crops that can establish quickly to outcompete the weed growth. Cover crops are planted between rotation of cash crop or at the same time with the cash crop. Some benefits of legumes cover crop mukuna brachata in all farm plantations are suppress weeds, reduce damage by rats, hinder damage and spreading of rhinoceros beetles. Second is mulching. It is an act of covering the soil between plants with a layer of material, mainly to retain soil moisture and smoother weed growth. There are two types of mulches can be used, organic and inorganic. Organic mulch like wood chips, straw, compost and newspaper can decompose and give nutrient to the soil while inorganic, like black plastic, silver shell plastic, crushed stone and gravel, does not need to be replenished radically. Several benefits of transplanting are only the better and healthy seed being selected, uniform crop stand and maturity, require less seed, reduce weed pressure, and provide crop a head start over the emerging weed. For example, in Asia, transplanting is one of the common practice for weed control in rice cultivation. The last one is intercropping, a practice of planting two or more crop varieties in one field, either simultaneously or close in time. The crop will have some or all of the life cycle overlap. It is important to choose crops that do not compete with each other in terms of sunlight, space, water, and nutrient when planning for intercropping. For example, planting early maturing crop with late maturing crop. There are four methods of intercropping, which differ in terms of plant arrangement and time of planting. The first one is row intercropping and strip intercropping. Next is mixed intercropping and relay intercropping. Several benefits of intercropping includes enhanced soil fertility, reduced usage of chemical fertilizer, lower crop susceptibility to insect and disease, increased field diversity and stability, and hamper weed population.